How's it going everybody? This video at first glance might be considered as something everyone is going to know already. But believe me, a lot of you probably will learn quite a few things. We're going to go over why the minion lane is so important in Dominion, including the points it gives, minion spawn rates and why some characters are so much better at holding this lane. And then at the end I'm going to list the best clearing combos for each hero. For a lot of them it's an absolute waste even attempt clearing, but I guess for the sake of completion I'm going to include the whole roster. And just to make this absolutely clear, I will repeat it many times throughout the video. Leave killing minions to the designated clearer in your team. I can't stress this enough. I will also not be covering any pikemen clearing for breach. You're on your own there. A lot of the tests in this video were done by Spaniard and there is a text version of it which uh, will also list way more numbers than I will give you. Because I know full well that some are prone to spacing out, so I will try and condense it to the most important ones, but definitely check out the link in the description for further details. So why is mid so important in Dominion? If you just look at the scoreboard, a boosted point is worth 2 score overall compared to the 1. Well. As so often, these two values don't tell the whole truth. For Honor is more than capable of handling decimal values, but the game doesn't like to display them. And it's no different here. These are the actual values. We're looking at 0.74 points per second for an unboosted zone. 1.85 points per second for a boosted zone. And then, only holding the minion lane gives 1.35 points per second. So right from the get-go this should be a surprise to a lot of people. This shows how important it is to win the first fight in mid. It is worth so much more than a backcap attempt. And on top of that, you now gain all the extra points from being able to farm the minions, because those points are not included in the previously mentioned value. An important point to mention at this point, I'm saying point too often, well, you, you do not gain points from your own minions killing the opposing ones. Only minions killed by players will give you actual points. If you kill your own minions, meaning by friendly fire, then this will grant points to the enemy team. It is unlikely to kill them with just normal attacks as it takes quite a few hits to take one down, but there are feats that do quite a good job at team killing minions. I've mentioned it in my trap guide that traps do friendly fire as well, but just like normal attacks, it's not nearly as lethal as some others. And these others include things like fire trap and caltrops. Both these feats melt your own minions. Mind, I said fire trap, because fire flask does not damage your own minions. Well, the fire from it doesn't, the explosion does a tiny bit. Why you ask? Because reasons. But both Nobushi and Nusha need to be careful how and when they use these feats unless they want to feed the enemies some points. Other huge tier 4 feats like Catapult, Spear Storm, Arrow Storm and so on also wipe the floor with your own minions, but they at least don't leave behind the field of death that your own little soldiers will walk over. So you know not to kill your own minions but the opposing ones. How many can there be? How many do spawn? And how often do they spawn? First of all, this is map dependent, but it's not as complicated as every map having a different number. Most maps have a max amount of minions of 34. Only 4 maps are an exception to this. Citadel Gate and Overwatch can have a total of 37 minions, and Harbour and Gauntlet can only have 20 minions total. These numbers are only for when you hold the midpoint. If you do not own the lane, these caps aren't applied. It's not strictly about numbers, but map layout plays a big part here as well. So when and how many soldiers do spawn then? The spawn rate for minions is every 15 seconds. Base spawn rates are 8 to 15 minions, once again it varies slightly depending on map. If the game decides that you need more minions at once, it can spawn multiple waves at once. But it won't change the time it takes for the spawn. So you can have multiple waves spawn at the same time. As I mentioned before, there is a cap to how many soldiers your side can field. But there are multiple factors that can change that. So if you do not hold the minion lane, your team is losing, and you play on a map that allows for lots of minions, the losing side can have up to 60 soldiers at once on the map. Boosting points also plays a role here. 
if you boost the point, the opposing team will spawn more minions. This is a double edged sword more or less. On the one hand, if left alone this would push the minions from the lane and capture it for that team. But if the lane is being farmed, this means even more points for the team that's already holding the lane. So I hope this makes it even clearer why having someone control this lane is really really important. That's it for now with all the numbers, but I think it's really important to showcase how crucial it is to hold and control the minion lane. And yes, I know I'm repeating myself. There are a few things you should be aware of if you want to clear mid. For one, the minions form a front line once they capture the lane. Depending on the map this can mean quite a bit of space is occupied. You'll see a lot of knight characters, especially lawbringers, throw a bomb on the minions there and then wonder why it takes so long for the zone to go to neutral. This is because of the soldiers at the very edge, they are persistent little focus, putting a little priority on those will make the lane contested much quicker. Another feat that puts the minion lane to neutral basically instantly is Battle Cry. It's a tier 3 feat on Raid and TMD. It's basically the new morale booster, but it has the added effect that enemy minions will run away from you. It basically has a fear effect. It's competing with Second Wind on Raider, but for TMD it's probably the best tier 3 feat he can pick. Another important feat interaction is with Smoke Bomb. You all know that minions keep poking you if you try reviving in the middle of them. Smoke will make them ignore you and you can easily get the revive. Well, we all know how consistent smoke is, so you might have to first leave the smoke and then re-enter to completely lose all aggro. One last thing before we go into each character's minion clear that also everyone can utilize when fighting in the minion lane. I've mentioned this in multiple videos already and so did other content creators. If you unlock and move towards minions and then throw an attack, in most cases this will be a zone, then the game considers this similar to an unlocked attack. This attack is not parable and if angled correctly, can hit people earlier. This is incredibly important and one of the reasons why specific characters are better in mid than others. Speaking of which, there are currently two pretty much undisputable kings of minion lane. That is Lawbringer and Kensei, with Lawbringer currently being the best. This is for multiple reasons. For one, he does have body count which lets him heal while clearing. Having a huge HP pool and second win also helps him to stay in lane much longer than many other characters. And on top of all that, it's his clear. I've shown this in his frame check video after the rework, but just to recap, his zone attack basically has no recovery whatsoever. Combine this with what I've shown you above, locking onto minions and throwing an unparable attack. With that attack having no mentionable recovery, this results in stupidly safe minion farming. He can't be punished for killing minions, he heals off killing them, and on top of that you don't really want to attack the Lawbringer either because of his stupidly high parry punishes. And if you do manage to hit him, I mean he has a 150 HP pool to work with. Other than the zone, his farming combo is light heavy light. Once again, light finishers have way less recovery than heavy finishers, so the chances of being punished for using them is way smaller. The other character is Kensei. Kensei's zone not only has insanely far reach, it also hits all the way around him. Which means that if he unlocks and throws it, he will most likely put opposing laners in block or hit stun, which makes his clearing also extremely safe. His other clearing combos are once again light heavy light, or he can use a triple light combo as well. These are the two strongest characters you can pick at the moment. I'll go down the list and explain the combos you can use to clear, but this is by no means intended as a tier list or something. Lots of arguments can be made why one is stronger than the other, so don't get hung up in the order I present them. I'll still try and keep it somewhat in order of viability, but please keep in mind that despite these being alright at doing that job, Lawbringer or Kensei should still be your first choice. So next up is Conqueror, despite the nerf of heal on block he is still extremely safe at clearing mid. Unlock zone leaves you in a full block stance while clearing minions and also healing from the kills. People will try and time unblockable so be aware of that, but 
he's still a decent character to go and mess about in mid. Now the lines are getting a bit blurry already, characters might have a different role in the match, yet are pretty good at clearing mid. One of these characters is Raider, your job isn't to sit and defend mid but to roam around, but your triple light chain while unlocked has really good clear. So if your mid laner is busy elsewhere, or you need to push out the lane real quick, then this is how you do it. JJ is similar, his job is to roam, but because of his Sifu stance and wide sweeping attacks, he can kill minions really effectively. It's Sifu into zone, into heavy, and rinse repeat. Stamina cost is high, but that's what Sifu stance is here for. Another character that's really good is Aramusha, his infinite light chain mows through minions, and with the body count feed, he can basically do this forever. Nobushi fell out of meta because of the nerves to her recoveries. She's no longer the queen of mid lane, her dodge cancels are way clunkier now and the extra delay make it easier for opponents to punish her clear. You can use your zone, but repeated sidewinders will also do the trick. Those become easier if you have an opponent to lock onto. And I think right here is probably a bit of a cut off, all the characters I mentioned so far are probably alright to pick as mid clearer in normal matchmaking scenarios. The following ones should not be considered as being in charge of the minion lane. Yeah, you might be able to clear in a pinch, but that's about it. Goki is one of these characters, his zone plus heavy kill quite a few minions at once, but he can neither sustain himself nor the killing. His main problem is the stun cost of his attacks. Chargeable heavies use more stamina than normal ones, so despite his zone being excellent, the follow-up heavy is quite lackluster if you compare minions kill to stamina used. I'm still not entirely sure uh, about Chung Hu. Running heavy into zone into left side heavy has the potential to clear tons of minions if they're all tightly packed together. But afterwards you're killing stragglers or small clusters, you kind, you kind of depend solely on your zone. Zone attack into forward dodge light into zone is decent clear. I feel like he's better at fighting in mid than he is clearing the lane. Highlander can kill tons of minions with his zone if the game decides to angle you correctly, but it takes a shit ton of stamina and leaves you vulnerable as well. Lots of maps allow for drop attacks on the mid lane for whatever reason, and being stuck in that zone is no good. Same goes for Centurion, his triple hit zone has decent clear, but right now it's not faintable, and not only that will change with the rework, but he might possibly move up the ranks when it comes to mid clear. His triple light chain into Jab resets the combo and you can rinse and repeat that. As it stands right now, Haymaker does not damage minions, unlike Shield Basher for example. I know some people feel strongly about this and are of the opinion that Haymaker should work on minions. This would give Centurion a clear similar to Aramusha. He does have body count as well, so he should be able to sustain himself and make it a true infinite. We'll see. Once the rework is available in force, we can give this a real test. BP is an idiot proof character, no matter what combination of attacks you input, they seem to be clearing amazingly well. Best clear is locked on double heavy into unblockable, into heavy, into unblockable, as long as you have stamina basically. All his attacks have amazing hitboxes. Valkyrie is another character I have an extremely hard time placing. On the one hand, she has no place farming mid, on the other hand, her zone can easily wipe out 20 minions at once. Heavies, despite looking like big sweeps, aren't all that great. The first one is good, the second and third feel lackluster, so stick to your zone. Warden is another weird one, he does have body count and he also has come at me, which in theory gives him tons of renown when clearing, but despite the buffs to his hitboxes, I really dislike his clear speed. If the light chain had more reach, then yeah, maybe. I guess you can make an argument for him being stronger than some of the ones I listed before, but I think his hitbox is holding him back quite significantly. Same goes for Tiandi, he does have come at me and his zone does have pretty good clear but that's it. I'm hesitant to even put him here but it's not like he can do anything else even halfway decent. At this point I'd say we're reaching characters that actually have no place in mid. 
Don't go there and clear unless your team tells you to for whatever reason. Shaolin, for example, does have an infinite chain with light heavy, but your job is to gank, so do that. Hitukiri is a roaming character and does have an infinite heavy chain, but the hitbox on them is absolutely atrocious. If you clear unlocked, then the heavies seem to hit in a much bigger arc. The heal on block nerf also means you can't sustain yourself in minions. Peacekeeper is a little special when it comes to assassins. The lights have an insane hitbox actually, which make them quite decent for clearing mid. Light, light, heavy or full zones work well. Berserker can mow through them with his zone if you position yourself correctly. His infinite chain also does a decent job. The character used to have amazing clear with the old back zone, which had an insane hitbox and a very low stamina cost and could basically not be punished because of dodge cancels and the recovery. But those times are gone. George can do zone into finish a light. Shinobi can zone faint, zone repeatedly for alright clear. He used to have monstrous clear back with minion killing animations, but those are gone. Warlord is left with his zone. The zone had its recovery reduced significantly in a recent patch, so it's quite safe to do so. The heavies, despite being these huge swings, seem to refuse to hit multiple minions. Orochi basically just has his zone, run by and kill a few, then keep on moving to where you need it. Nusha does have her cult drops, which absolutely annihilate anything that walks over them, but combo wise, light light zone is probably the best. Do not use her third heavy as it will do the throw. And now we're getting to the bottom of the barrel. I can't quite decide which one of the two is worse at clearing, Gladiator or Shaman. Glad zone is not nearly as effective at clearing as one might think, and then you're stuck with your light chain. The last combo heavy, despite having a slashing motion, it hits fuck all. Shaman has absolutely horrible hitboxes as well. A light, if you're extremely lucky and the planets align, might hit two minions at once. The zone can be good or randomly decide to not want to target anything. I personally do not bother, leave it to your team, go and gank somewhere. And that's it, all characters and tons of helpfully useful tips regarding the minion lane in Dominion. For everything more in depth, you need to ask comp players. Should you have any additional questions, feel free to let me know. My discord is quite active and people are answering questions all the time. Drop by and see for yourself. Until then, I hope the video was helpful, thanks for watching, latest everybody.